Made in India with pride, it's a motto that has long been the cornerstone of Chennai-based data patterns. This 30-year-old company, which develops end-to-end -end indigenous defense and aerospace systems for armed forces, is the star of this episode of Make in India, a new deal for defense. CNBC TV 18's Jude Sonnet heads to the factory floor to find out how data patterns has managed to stay ahead in the race to give warfare an electronic edge. This was a turning point in India's military history. Few people thought India's Brahmos missile, which was first tested in 2001, would go on to become one of India's deadliest warheads. Fewer still who witnessed the Brahmos embark on its maiden launch from Chandipur in Odisha imagined that the following decade would see the missile become a mainstay of India's defense arsenal. The fact that it has is a matter of pride for this company, Data Patterns, which lies over 1,500 kilometers away from Chandipur. Then a small technology company, Data Patterns, was given the task of devising the missile's fire control system, an event that has become one for the history books. Reminiscing on his date with history, the company's CEO S. Rangarajan says he still credits the Brahmos deal as being the big break Data Patterns needed to enter the big league. We did the fire control system of Brahmos. We got a, a fairly large order at that time uh, against competition from l &T, Tata, Bharat Dynamics, all the big wigs in those days. And we were a smaller company with 40 people that time. We got to deliver the fire control system of Brahmos and we delivered this in one year, including certification. And that, I think, gave us some recognition. From there on, we started doing a lot of products for uh, uh, defense. That same year, the company began supplying navigation systems for India's then prestigious PSLV program, Landmark 1, how it competed with Wipro to deliver products for the Department of Space, Landmark 2, how its company won a contract to deliver Sri Harikota's countdown facility, and Landmark 3, the opportunity to become the Department of Space's lone vendor in supplying end systems. Since then, the company has expanded in size, scale and dreams. Uh, the first kind of breaks we got was uh, when we delivered systems to the Department of Space, one against competing Wipro, System Engineering Division. Wipro then signed an agreement with us that they will sell our products, rather their own multiple two systems. That gave us some uh, good confidence of technology, what is homegrown and designed and developed here. The second la uh, landmark or a breakthrough for us, was, which is very personal to me also, is when we got a contract to deliver the second launch pad. You see the launch pad in Sri Harikota, where the PSLV, GSLV vehicles are launched. We have done indigenously, 100%, the full countdown facility is there. The electronics are designed by us. First launch pad they imported, and they were very worried that India cannot do this. We broke the record, we built everything, and it's 12 years now, it's continuous operation, no failure. Now all the launch pad countdown system is delivered by us. Second, third area was, which is very important is, see one thing about Department of Space, anything designed in India, they give you preference. So we then got an opportunity to build all their test systems. Today we build almost 95% of what is flying in the launch vehicle. The test system is supplied by us as a single vendor. Data pattern supplies that. We have a rate contract with the uh, Department of Space, where they directly buy without even tendering. That is because this is the only company who have designed end-to-end -end, uh, products and solutions for testing for them in indig indigenously. The company's identity as a defense manufacturer was not really on the cards when Ranga Rajan established data patterns way back in 1985. Then the company mainly catered to a collective move towards automation in the lab instrument space. It then made a foray into an emerging market for PC modules, and it was almost 10 years before it inked a deal with the Department of Space in 1994. That same year, the company began supplying navigation systems for India's then prestigious PSLV program. Since then, the company has expanded in size, scale and dreams, leading to the setting up of this factory seven years ago. But Rangarajan admits that data patterns didn't exactly follow the regular script. I started with 11,000 rupees in the pocket, post PF whatever we got dues, and that is what we started. So, you know, building a technology company from scratch and also um, doing product development without having a production assembly line which gives you regular orders is always a, a very risky game. And we realized it after I started development. So, once you start development, it's like by the tail. So, you have to keep this going. And then came the new millennium, and with it, new challenges. While wars between countries were fought and won on the battlefield, nations had begun a new war on terror. 
At around the same time, India's Defence Research and Development Organisation or the DRDO began looking at the private sector to beef up India's defence arsenal. And the timing was just right for Data Patterns, which was looking to revisit its business strategy. The company found that its tryst with space research wasn't bringing in dividends in terms of repeat orders, and survival meant diversification and a scale-up in operations. Thus began the company's romantic tryst with Indian Defence. Data patterns began with a 1.29 crore rupee order, one that entailed developing cockpit displays for light combat aircraft and mission control computers. The success of this contract pushed the company to quickly expand its DRDO portfolio, and it soon bagged orders to design rugged display systems and off-the-shelf military equipment. The success, of course, came with its own set of requirements. After all, competing in the big league meant expansion was inevitable. Expansion not only meant more people, but better capabilities. So growing the workforce from the original 40 to today's 550 was just the tip of the iceberg. We were at that point in time a design company. You know, we built products across the uh, scale in all of DRDO. But then we were actually outsourcing production. So we said, unless we, you know, if you were to scale and the market is changing, uh, for initial requirements to offset manufacturing and later probably into your own products, he said we'll have to put in the infrastructure. Bigger infrastructure meant moving into a larger workspace. So in 2006, the company secured a 30 crore rupee loan from SBI and used this to build a manufacturing unit in South Chennai. By the time 2008 drew around, data patterns had a new look, a larger workforce, a new home to call its own and a new set of priorities. One of the first changes in this regard was the shift in focus to developing new end systems from the bottom up. Simply put, data patterns began innovating, placing internal emphasis on creating intellectual property and expanding its defense product portfolio. From just building hardware and software and across the domain for various kinds of platforms for air, land, water and underwater, we decided we will build end products with domain. And where the IP can belong to us and we can build the end systems and compete with the best in the world. We've started doing that in the last five years. Since then, Data Patterns manufactures a robust range of products, from modern-day cockpit displays and radar systems to IP-driven seekers for guided missiles, from navigation systems to COT boards to first-of-its-kind products with the potential for disruptive innovations. The company's masterpiece, of course, is its range of IFF equipment, which Data Patterns says could hold the key to electronic warfare. IFF stands for Identification of Friend or Foe, and as you've guessed by now, this equipment helps identify enemy aircraft through a series of encrypted signals. The armed forces currently requires around 3,000 of such units, which the company says have been upgraded to modern day standards. Incidentally, the IFF equipment that our fighter jets currently employ dates back to 1970. With this brand new inventory, the focus shifted again. This time it was to become a 100 crore rupee company. A landmark data patterns eventually crossed four years ago in 2011. Along the march to this milestone, data patterns also built a strong clientele. From a host of DRDO labs like the Aeronautical Development Establishment, Aeronautical Development Agency, Electronics and Radar Development Establishment and the Aerial Delivery Research and Development Establishment to defense public sector undertakings like HAL and Bharat Electronics. Gradually, the company's diversification strategy started to come full circle and to the client list were added names like the Indian Navy and defense manufacturers and contractors in Israel and Europe. It is also in talks with the Indian Air Force and the Indian Army to supply products through the Ministry of Defense tenders. But the innovation and the dreams have not stopped. As part of its strategy to tap into IAF clientele, the company is joining hands with platform suppliers like HAL. Data Pattern says it could also look at building products and working on upgrades with Tier 1 platform suppliers in the US, Europe and Russia. One of the more noticeable areas of Data Pattern's work has been in avionics. In fact, most of these cockpit display systems that you see are the products of this company's end-to-end -end approach towards developing indigenous aerospace systems. Part of this avionics vertical also includes developing components for the IAF's Sukhoi-30 fighter jets, and India's much-hyped BrahMos missile system. Again, Data Patterns did not really plan this foray into the field of avionics. Rather, it grabbed the opportunity thrown out by another slice of India's history, the post Pokhran era. When the successful nuclear tests of 1998 shone the spotlight on India's need for greater expertise in defense. Post Pokhran, 
when uh, there were sanctions, UK sanction and uh, US sanctions were in India, we got the contract to upgrade or change the, the test system for the seeking helicopter, where everything almost whatever is flying in the helicopter has to be tested in three test stations. It gives you a comprehensive understanding of how do you do avionics testing, integrated avionics testing. So we did that. The avionics portfolio that emerged then has only strengthened over time. So far it has executed six radar upgrades for ISRO and plans on utilizing its competency not only to execute orders for the Indian Air Force and the Indian Navy, but to reinforce its footprint in a fast expanding market for Indian made defense systems. We are openly now working with some foreign companies to say we will build co-develop here, develop some here, develop abroad, use it in India and abroad. We are actively seeking DRDOs uh, to allow, uh, allow consultancy to happen, to see that some of the domains which they have, we will spend for the domain, build the product, compete with the foreigners with products here in India. For this, innovation will remain key. But Rangarajan is quick to caution against accelerated innovation, saying the need to stick to processes must take priority, even with an innovation roadmap in place. Put the basic foundation, understand the technologies involved, design that is Indian IP, create those components and products and subsystems, get through the integration process successfully and live through the process. So it takes time. So you can't jump process in defense in aerospace. You need to have reliable engineering and process. Well, the slow and steady approach which mixes innovation with caution and ideas with expertise has been the cornerstone of data patent success story. But the journey so far has not been without its challenges and with time these challenges have only become larger and more demanding. When we return on the special episode of Making India a New Deal for Defence, we'll take a closer look at the challenges data patents has identified as being the most daunting and how it hopes to meet them. That and more when we return. Thank <laughs> you.